Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 30th of November 2023. Uh, before we go to the front line, let me remind you of what my map actually means. And to do that, of course, I need to have the thing prepared. And I haven't because I always forget. Anyway, that's the key to my map. Pause the video if you want to check that out. Okay, let's go to the... Well, I'm not even going to zoom in, actually. There's no news really on the Kupiansk to Svatova to Crimea front line in, in terms of exchange of territory there. We have uh, some Ukrainians claimed counterattacks for, from the Ukrainians. That's according to the Russians in the Liman. Mampashi area or near Kupiansk, but essentially unchanged. There is it is a very active front line, this axis here, even though the weather has apparently deteriorated in the area, but not too much to report. So we come down to Bakhmut where you can see a number of pins, uh, and we'll go and indeed see what um Suryat Maps has to say. So they claim that in the Bakivka Reservoir. The Russian army has made small advances reaching the pond north of Bodonivka. So that is, if we zoom in just around here, uh, some games there near the Bakivka res Reservoir on the way to Bodonivka. Now, if you remember yesterday, Surat Maps had a really large gain for the Russians in the area of, if, if I go and find that for you, I'm sure I've got it. I think it's here. Yes, in the area of Kromova here. So this is the large gains they have, have, including eventually taking the whole of Kromova as a village there. Uh, and they wrote about that. And that was pretty, con well, not controversial. I mean, it's a fairly sizable chunk of land that they took. And then we've had deep state maps showing some gains for the Russians as well. Minor gains towards Bakhmut itself and then some more towards this height here. And we'll look at the topography in a second. Andrew Perpetua is not been so confident in those gains and although there are some gains in the forest area just to the north of Bakhmut here he has much more minor gains and then later said my source in the area says Kromova has heavy fighting he said Russia launched an attack that was squashed then launched a second attack the results of which are unknown to me believe it or not I'm still updating the map for yesterday and there will be an update for this there and that was at 3 51 p.m yesterday my time and he has since updated to this change which is not what the other two mappers have particularly surat maps uh don't get confused with this being uh, anything other than that's that's water and he just has that we've imported some of his uh, data there so actually he uses that as a as somewhere he can move the map like i'm doing at the moment because sometimes when you're playing with a map in the background like in the editing form if you grab an area that's selected you move the entire polygon and it shifts where the front lines are so sometimes you need gaps that you can just grab and move the map like that not in this iteration of the map but but behind the under the bonnet really so that's why that is in in the shape it is there but so you can ignore that essentially the defensive line for the russians is here as according to andrew perpetua here on the yellow line as according to deep state and then much further forward in this red area as according to Suryat maps and that continues that different continues further to the north uh, between Suryak and particularly Andrew Perpetua. Why this area is important is if we go if, into uh, the 3D mapping of here and I'm going to switch it so we're looking in this direction we're looking down into Bakhmut we're looking in a southeasterly direction where we will eventually be so what we have is here there's a dirt track and um, if we switch the map around and go into 3D we can see that this is an incredibly important area because there's this ridge, if you like, of high ground along here that overlooks Kromove and gives the Ukrainians a real advantage in terms of looking over Bakhmut. You can see Bakhmut there that, that kind of rises into the distance. But this dip going down from this high point here and the dirt track where we're standing at the moment gives the Ukrainians a really good advantage in terms of seeing into Bakhmut, sniping into Bakhmut, mortar fire. Uh, I don't know whether they're using tanks, but you know, tank, mortar, artillery, ATGMs, all of that kind of capability 
could be used from this vantage point. And if the Russians have genuinely taken Kromove just below here, then that is a challenge, a direct challenge, as you can see from Deep State Map, just under this promontory here, uh, the Russians have, have control, which would mean this would all be in a grey zone. That makes it very challenging for, the, challenging for the Ukrainians to maintain that advantage in looking over Bakhmut. This is super important, really. There has been imagery of snipers actually firing from here so this is definitely an area where the ukrainians have been eking out an advantage um, and the if Suret maps is correct in what they say and to some extent deep state maps and that challenges the ukrainians in that area and that would be significant we'll wait to see whether that is indeed the case that the whether the russians have advanced there and of course that pushes the ukrainians back further and further towards chazibyar given the russians are breathing space in bakhmut itself as we come to the south there is no more detail about anything taking place in the south the isw uh talks of um, here, a prominent Russian mill blogger claimed that the elements of the 98th Guards Airborne Division, VDV, so that's the paratroopers, captured Kromove and additionally advanced near the Bakivka Reservoir, but the ISW has not yet observed confirmation of that. So again, those Syria maps type claims that don't have confirmation however russian sources claim that fighting continues northwest and southwest of bakhmut and a ukrainian reserve officer noted that the situation southwest of bakhmut along the klischivka and kurdyamivka line is especially challenging due to an increased number of russian assaults and a number of russian units fighting in the area so that is to say in this area from klischivka down to andrievka kurdyamivka the russians are putting a lot of pressure on the ukrainians they are con they are um, bringing a number of different units to bear in this area, pressuring the Ukrainians a lot. So that is that. Haven't heard too much about Horlivka between Bakhmut and uh, Avdivka in this sort of Shumi area where the Ukrainians have had some success. It seems somewhat more positional now. As we come down to Avdivka, we can see that Andrew Perpetua has a little bit of a gain for the Russians just northwest of Novobakhmativka. That is the Novobakhmativka here, not the Novobakhmativka just across the railway line. Uh, it's, it's our favorite name game in Ukraine. So talking about Avdivka, as Suret Map says, the situation to the north uh, is that there are heavy clashes taking place around the water treatment facilities, which is now contested. Moreover, Russian attacks towards the coke plant were repelled by the Ukrainian army. So slightly better news for the Ukrainians with some gains there. And you can see that representing the pins. Thank you so much to JL who's done the mapping today. The water treatment area here plant is in the gray zone again, uh, pushing the Russians back as according to Surat Matt. So we don't know whether that is a counterattack or a rejig with Surat maps is, is not often uh, immediately clear, as in it's clear from what he says has happened, which is a counterattack, but you never quite know whether that is actually the case or whether he got the he was overzealous in the original uh, Russian advances. But as you can see, no other changes elsewhere, which is good news for the Ukrainians. A bit of stability, particularly in this southeastern area, by the um, by the industrial area there okay going back to the isw uh we see quite a big highlighted area so let's go through this russian mill bloggers claim that russian forces advanced between three and five hundred meters in a direction of novo kalinove uh, and near stepova this has not been uh, confirmed Nova Kalinyovy is here Stepova is there that would be counter-attacking where they lost ground near Stepova if they were doing that and then they're attacking to the north That's, there's no confirmation of that but it's what some Russians are claiming as the ISW says they've not observed visual evidence of that Russian sources additionally claim that Russian forces are clearing and consolidating positions within the industrial zone to the southeast of Abdivka could well be taking place a Russian soldier who is reportedly fighting in the industrial zone set, claimed that the situation is very challenging that for the Russians and that it is difficult for Russian forces to move through the area due to Ukrainian drone use and constant mortar fire. One Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces captured several unspecified Ukrainian positions near Siverny. Ukrainian sources reported that Russian forces are also trying to capture the Abdivka coke plant uh, and the Ukrainian battalion commander reportedly defending near the coke plant characterized Russian attacks in the area as highly attritional squad-sized frontal assaults. I presume that's highly attritional for both sides. 
I think this will be expensive fighting taking place, but certainly for the Russians at least. And in fact, reporting from Ukraine has had further done a further video on that area uh, this morning. The other place that was mentioned there is on the way to Siverny. So that's probably in line with what Surat Map said yesterday with some gains for the Russians in that field there. And just to finish it off, a Ukrainian terrorist group of forces spokesperson noted that Russian activity near Abdivka has significantly increased over the past day and reported that Russian forces are using armoured vehicles. So again, starting to use, um, or not starting, continuing to use armoured vehicles to help their support. There are certain areas where they appear to be able to still use vehicles and other areas where they're concentrating on assaults without vehicles. They're probably not likely to be using vehicles so much around a coke plant as they have to infiltrate that whole complex and that's not so easy in, in apcs and whatnot so that's what's happening in avdivka difficult no doubt for the ukrainians but a bit of joy for, in some counterattacks, possibly in in the north near the water treatment plant but it could just be a rejig and then we come all the way down to a slight gain uh, so we're bypassing Marienka where there is still heavy fighting and some claims of advances. In fact, I think Suryak Map talks about uh, Marienka, yeah. So Suryak Map says of that area, during the last hours there have been minimal Russian advances in Marienka. However, there's nothing certain of a breakthrough of the front. In fact, it's highly unlikely this can happen in the short term. The locality has become a symbol of Ukrainian resistance. For uh, He continues, for after a year and a half of fighting, Russian forces still have not established effective control over it. The only possibility of ending this battle will Will be either Ukrainian withdrawal from its positions or by the opening of secondary fronts by the Russian troops that prevent the Ukrainian army from maintaining the defensives on the axis. For now, it does not seem to be a Russian priority and the Ukrainians do not seem to have problems to, in maintaining their positions. A similar case occurs in Krinky on the eastern bank of the Dnipro. There is no certainty of a Ukrainian withdrawal from the locality, even in spite of Russian bombardments. And the rotations continue to take place, allowing them to maintain a bridgehead. However, the situation remains stagnant and the inability of both sides to change the situation is producing a large number of casualties. More on that in a second. So, uh, that there is uh, some small gains. Uh, there are some small gains for the Russians along a tree line just uh, between Priyutne and Staromayorsky. So some uh, some fighting still taking place in the Velika Novosilka sector, but it is a lot calmer than it was previously. And then Robotina, no changes to the mapping from either side there. Uh, the ISW says that there are claims from the Russians that they've advanced up to 800 meters in several areas near Kopani and Robotina, uh, but that's not been confirmed by the ISW. Also, the Russians claiming to capture unspecified Ukrainian strongholds near Vabove, again, not confirmed. Prominent Russian mill blogger claimed that on November 29th, yesterday, the Russian forces are were focused on capturing tactically advantageous positions in the Robotina area and do not intend to launch larger counter attacks, which is to say that it's very small attacks, you know, for basically ar arguing fighting over a tree line as opposed to doing a massive counter attacking thrust to, say, take the whole of Robotina or something. So the Russians aren't concerned with that, and nor should they be in a defensive posture. They would want to soak up the Ukrainian attacks, really, um, and that would be to their advantage. Right, when we come down to the Kusson area, you can see no changes at all to the front line from either mapper or any of the mappers, and that. As I said yesterday, same thing I'll say today, that gives me cause for concern because while the Russians are unable to dislodge the Ukrainians from Krinky and they maintain a foothold there, and while it will be attritional for the Russians, the Russians will also be very happy, as they did yesterday, to hammer the Ukrainians with aviation um, guided glide bombs, these FAB 500s, just peppering them with that. It, is, it makes it really challenging for the Ukrainians, although the Russians are, as I say, suffering themselves. So the ISW says Russian mill bloggers claim that battles are ongoing near Krinky and that Russian aviation and artillery units are heavily striking the area. The Ukrainian general staff reported that Ru Ukrainian forces maintain positions on the East Bank and that uh, Russian mill bloggers are claiming that Ukrainian forces continue to transfer new assault groups to the left bank. There are between three and 400 personnel operating near Krinky. Continued Russian claims about the arrival of Ukrainian reinforcements on the East Bank suggest that Russian forces are struggling to interdict 
Ukrainian efforts to supply and reinforce their positions on the Eastern Bank. Uh, all of that is no doubt true, but all of it doesn't really bode super positively for the Ukrainians in terms of needing to take the ground here to create a much wider bridgehead so that they aren't so concentrated in a couple of areas that mean that they are more vulnerable to aviation and artillery. However, they are attriting the Russians. They are doing a really good job of making this a bit of a meat grinder area for the Russians. There are lots of claims coming out. I, I went through this one with you this morning that a Russian complained about the Ukrainians being too well organized in terms of multiple launch rocket systems, cluster ammunition, drones, etc. The Russians have drones, but they are having difficulty in using them, probably ec electronic warfare. The, they have big losses in personnel, only seven VDV left in one unit, and they had to be withdrawn from the front. 20 in his unit left he wonders whether he's going to survive this and his account contrasts greatly with what official mill bloggers are saying now he's or there's also another video this looks like the same guy let's have a, a listen to what he says as a source on the front line i uh, i've just cut out my reading through of the um of the translation that subtitles a bit screwed but he's also just like talking nuts as well but it's really interesting insight into his morale into the idea that that people are losing their legs around him and he's still really worried about captivity what's fascinating about this is that still the um, myths of ukrainian captivity prevail where people think that the ukrainians are going to do absolutely terrible things to them if they're captured and so they'd rather die than be captured this is a really prevailing um myth of of the front line that we've seen uh, over time and it's and it's still there for a lot of russians anyway this is an insight into how terrible the conditions are at least for the for this russian and in, in his unit in the in the Kherson area um but there you go that's the uh, frontline update for you today fairly short one not a great deal of movement on those front lines we are possibly moving into the winter segment or at least into the uh, wet autumnal uh phase before the winter when it starts the ground starts hardening up in in pro in winter proper you might actually get more activity than you will have at the moment anyway thanks for watching take care speak soon and don't forget to check out my live stream tomorrow morning uk time 10 a.m uk time 5 a.m est uh with john sweeney um on yeah he's a f former bbc investigative journalist documentary maker author he wrote killer in the kremlin which is a book that i i suggest all of you read uh yeah come and check out that live stream as i talk to him he is working in kiev anyway take care speak soon